do what the government should have done before they put the first reading up in the first place. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call Erica Stanford. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm pleased to take a call on the Conservation Indigenous Freshwater Fish Amendment Bill at first reading. The objectives of this bill are to improve the workability of the fisheries management tools in the Conservation Act 1987, to provide a complete and effective toolbox for fisheries management. And on the surface, the, the aims in this bill are good. Our indigenous freshwater fish are in need of protection. In 2013, nearly three quarters of our indigenous freshwater fish were at risk of extinction and 50 per cent of those are not found anywhere else in the world, so the stakes are really high. And there are dozens of fish that are native to New Zealand, 57 species in fact from slithering eels to tiny white bait, each of them entirely odd, like the prehistoric boneless fish known as the vampire of the sea, because it bleeds the blood out of its prey. It's an ancient, spineless, endangered species that literally sucks the life out of its host, leaving it an empty, useless shell. It's a New Zealand first, I mean, sorry, a New Zealand fish, totally a New Zealand fish, called the lamprey, and it's weird and wonderful and cool, and it is worthy of protection. We acknowledge that these weird, wonderful, and special indigenous fish are precious, and we will support this bill through to select committee, but we do have some serious concerns, as my colleague Todd Muller pointed out about the potential overreach, the unstated, unstated impacts this bill may have on our recreational fishers and our rural communities. Commercial white baiters, rural water users, fishermen feel that they are adversely affect by, affected by this bill. They feel aggrieved that they have not been consulted. They feel that the excuse for consultation, that the fact that it couldn't happen was because of the legislative timetable was feeble. Fish and Game, who represent thousands of people across New Zealand, have not been consulted, despite the impact that this bill will have on them. And I'd say that this is unbelievable, but given the previous actions of this government, a lack of consultation is t entirely believable. 110,000 anglers are represented by Fish and Game, so the unintended or otherwise effects of this bill will impact on a large number of people. So the question is, does this bill undermine the interests of Fish and Game? With no consultation from the Minister, Fish and Game had to hire a lawyer to get an opinion on this question. The advice back wasn't great. Uh, Fish and Game's lawyer, Geoffrey Palmer's legal opinion, says that the uh, aspects of the reforms impact directly and negatively on Fish and Game. Uh, he goes on to say he considers this bill has the potential to seriously impact on Fish and Game's interests. As we can see, tensions are high and there, are need, there needs to be a balance between protecting our environment, saving our native fish species and allowing New Zealanders to enjoy access to nature, to the environment as they've been doing for hundreds of years. It's not one or the other like the Greens would have us believe. At the select committee process, we will need to hear from the vital evidence from fish and game, private landowners, recreational fishers and from the public. We will take their concerns seriously as it is the first time that they will be heard. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, we look forward to scrutinising this bill at select committee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I call Angie warren Clark. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to rise.